in the last class we looked at this particular example on quadratic programs right which was to minimize this quadratic function x in rn let's say uh, q is positive definite okay subject to some inequ some equality constraint of the form or let's say inequality constraint of this form ax less than equal to b where a is some matrix in r cross n okay all right so in this case let's say r turns out to be much much smaller than n and can be in the range uh, let's say 100k or a million dimensional sort of uh, variable right now let's say dif different agents are trying to solve this problem in a distributed manner so what could be a potential challenge that you can see in solving such problems especially in this case so let's say we are i mean we have a network of agents and every agent has access to a part of the same matrix right so everyone is trying to solve this global problem but they only have access to certain rows of the same matrix number of such rows are this little r so everyone would try and come up with their own uh, sort of estimate of this global x okay now what what is a particular challenge that you see in solving uh, this problem in a distributed manner especially in the when you have r much much smaller than n or n is n happens to be very large so again in distributed optimization whenever an agent solves for a particular problem they are also going to be exchanging information with their neighbors right and exchanging a variable which is 100k dimensional that is going to be a, that is going to pose a serious requirement on the communication channel right the bandwidth that is required to share that large dimensional variable and this is not a very viable approach to go about solving this problem right because every time you i mean everyone like any agent solves this problem locally they would be exchanging their information with their neighbors and trying to get a sense of how the uh, final sort of or the glo global estimate looks like and this is going to be seriously communication intensive so when n is very large so it is going to pose a computational or bandwidth requirement on uh, communication channel right and this may be prohibitive when n is very large the other problem that we see is well i mean it's not too difficult but at the same time working with these kind of inequality constraints may not be as easy right so the question is can we try to come up uh, try to if, like reformulate this problem in a manner such that it reduces the bandwidth requirement and there are much simpler constraints to work with is that clear so that so our objective is to be able to convert this optimization problem into an equivalent sort of optimization problem such that so can we come up with a simpler optimization problem and when i say simpler so something with which has lesser bandwidth requirement so really the two sort of very like two different dimensions of concern are r and n right we know that r is much much smaller than n so something that scales with r and not with n right so bandwidth requirement scales with r so that would be a simpler version right so what does ax less than equal to b represent here so these are r inequality constraints right and if something if i come up with a problem which has fewer inequality constraints to work with and but it scales with the number of inequality constraints so that would be a simpler problem to work with right so it scales with r and not n and has simpler so when i say simpler optimization problem the other objective is instead of working with this kind of inequality constraints ax less than equal to b can the constraint be sim uh, simplified further and the answer to this particular question is yes 
mean that's one of the reasons why we are studying this, right? But then, uh, and the way we sort of uh, approach is, we convert this, so this is called a primal optimization problem. In its original form, it's a primal optimization problem. And we are going to look at its, uh, so we are going to convert this primal form to something called dual optimization problem. So we are going to change this to a dual optimization problem. So, and we would see that it's much easier to work with dual optimization problem in certain cases than working with the primal form. We are also going to look at uh, things like weak duality. Then conditions under which weak duality becomes strong duality. Okay, and finally we are going to look at something called Lagrangian dual function. So again all of this are going to be related to uh, be able to pose this problem, uh, pose this optimization problem as uh, an equivalent dual optimization problem and try to study conditions under which these forms are equivalent. So. So that would be the emphasis of today's lecture. Is that clear? Okay. Any questions so far? At least from the point of view of motivating why we need to study dual optimization problem. So in a primal optimization problem, things scale with x, right? And x can be large dimensional here. And you wouldn't want to be exchanging very large amount of information uh, through a communication like channel because it would have larger bandwidth requirement. Again, we have inequality constraints to work with. So we would want to come up with an equivalent problem which possibly returns the same solution but something which scales with R, the number of inequality constraints that you have. And instead of working with these in, like complex inequality constraints, maybe we can simplify this further. So that would be the objective and that, that will be achieved using a dual form. And we are going to look at dual forms of uh, optimization problem, okay. So what is this, like let's start with the standard primal form or primal convex okay. So a more sort of general form of opt convex optimization problem is minimize some function f of x subject to you have a bunch of you have bunch of inequality constraints so h i x less than or equal to 0 for and then you have some equality constraints And we are going to be assuming so all the functions f these are convex okay so these are convex functions and let's say the optimal solution to this problem happens to be p star Okay, so p star is the minimum value of f of x subject to these constraints. Okay, so why p star? Because this is the primal form, so I am using the term p to denote that the primal objective value is p star. Okay, so we are going to be assuming that these functions are convex. In fact, in most cases, this function lj, the equality constraints, we work with linear equality constraints, and we assume that p star is finite. So throughout the lecture we are going to be working under this assumption and the question and then we will try to come up with a dual form of this primal optimization problem, okay. So for this uh, primal optimization problem, so we define uh, Lagrangian 
finite value yeah p star is less than infinity like I mean between minus infinity yeah. all right. So, we define Lagrangian for this particular problem is let us first look at the definition and then we will see we will basically try to study the consequences of this uh, studying this particular object. Okay. So, again to start with we have this primal form right this primal object optimization problem which is to minimize f of x subject to these inequality constraints and in the these, these bunch of equality constraints. And depending on the number of inequality and equality constraints we have we define something called Lagrangian of this particular problem and Lagran Lagrangian is defined to be f of f x plus uh, this particular term. So, essentially to say that lambda is in R m and uh, nu is in is this clear all right. So, so why do we care about this particular Lagrangian uh, ok. So, let us motivate this with an example. Suppose you are a company right and you are trying to minimize total loss in revenue. So, let us say you are trying to minimize, minimize a function think of this function as loss in revenue subject to some budgeting constraints. So, let us say the budget is b x equal to b ok. So, the total budget that you you have a budget function. So, depending on the number of quantities you produce. So, x is the number of quantity right. So, you are trying to minimize total loss in revenue based on how much quantity you produce. So, you want to optimize the number of quantities you produce so as to minimize the total loss in revenue uh, and then you are I mean you have some budgeting constraint. So, tot little b is your budget that you want to operate under ok. So, if I try to uh, analyze this uh, pictorially. So, again your functions or let us say your budget set or constraint set is something like this. So, this can be ok. I mean you can operate like let us say this is the total budget that has been given to you ok. I mean yeah it I mean in general it can be less than equal to b, but I am trying to study a simpler case. So, for now just ignore this particular part. So, we are just looking at what happens to Lagrangian when we just work with this Lagrangian under equality constraint. So, let us say this is the equality constraint that you are asked to operate under. So, this is your budget the total money that you have uh, and then you want to like spend that much money, but at the same time you want to minimize the loss in revenue ok. And your function uh, again we can draw the level sets of the function. So, this can be for instance f x equal to 0, f x equal to some value let us say 1.5 so and so on. So, f x increases this way right. And when does this function get minimized subject to this particular equality constraint? Yeah you are right in the sense that maybe I should have drawn this differently. So, interior is not included. So, let us say ok in this case yeah. So, b x equal to b is this constraint just this constraint right. So, when does this function get minimized? If it basically gets minimized at the point where the function touches this for the first right. So, at this point here ok. At this point what is the direction like basically you have at the since it touches at this point right. Uh, so, essentially if I if I draw a line which is orthogonal to this particular direction it is it is like a tangent to this uh, constraint set as well right. So, the gradient of this this would be the gradient of f of x. Now, if I look at this constraint set b x equal to b what is the normal or the gradient of this constraint set it would be pointing in this direction right ok. And all we know is that these vectors either it can be pointing in this direction or in the opposite direction depending on whether it increases in this direction or decreases. But we know that these vectors are going to be collinear 
right? So in this, so basically we know that at least pictorially we know that gradient of f of x is some constant nu times gradient of p, right? Because these vectors are collinear. So vectors here and here, these are collinear. Okay. I mean they may be pointing in the same direction or in the opposite direction, but they would still be pointing along the same line. So same direction, right? On an, on a, or another way to write this is okay. So this is one of the constraints that we have for optimality. So if now let's define this optimal point to be x star and so one of the constraints that we have for optimality is that gradient of f of x star is some new star times gradient b x star. So this is equal to 0, right? That is one of the constraints. What is the other constraint? b x star equal to b, right? I mean of course x star has to be a feasible point. So b x star equal to b is another constraint. Okay. So now for this problem, this, this is first of, I mean, by the way, this is a primal optimization problem. And let us look at the Lagrangian for this, right? So there are no inequality constraints here. So we won't even include this. I mean, this is just to motivate uh, uh, the need for Lagrangian like this. So there is no equality constraint here, uh, inequality constraint. So the corresponding Lagrangian would be for this problem, Lx nu. There is just one equality constraint so that Lagrange, I mean so the dimension of nu is just one. So this would be f of x okay. Now suppose now treat this particular Lagrangian okay. So remember we started with the constraint optimization problem. Now think of this constraint optimization problem as an unconstrained optimization problem with this being your like objective function. So for when the optim uh, objective function is unconstrained or the optimization problem is unconstrained, what is the condition for optimality? For unconstrained optim minimization, gradient vanishes, right? So in this case there are two variables x and nu. So the gradient with respect to both the variables must vanish. So when I say gradient with respect to x, so that would be gradient of f of x at the optimal point x star, right? At the optimal point x star, gradient x plus this is equal to 0. So this is gradient with respect to x and you assume that x star uh, nu star are the optimal, so like x star nu star is the optimal solution and the gradient with respect to nu must also vanish right because it is a function of two variables x and nu. So the gradient with respect to nu is all should also vanish and when you take the gradient with respect to nu you are left with just this equality constraint which anyway needs to be satisfied. So b x star equal to b is another constraint and that is what we had uh, obtained even uh, pictorially right. So in some sense Lagrangian helps you convert a constrained optimization problem into an unconstrained optimization problem. Is this clear? Any questions on this? Yeah, so in with inequality it is not that straightforward, but we will we'll, uh, we'll come to that. But for the equality constrained optimization problem, is this clear? So both these constraints need to be satisfied and uh, I mean even uh, analytically and as well as like pictorially that, that sort of uh, makes sense. So these quantities lambda and nu, these are called Lagrange multipliers. And they would also help you uh, dualize your primal uh, objective optimization problem. So they are also called dual variables. Okay. Is this clear? So lambda and nu are your Lagrange multipliers or the dual variables. 
and they play a role when we try to come up with a dual uh, formulation of your primal optimization problem. But really you should see Lagrangian form or sort of uh, the Lagrangian as a way to convert a constrained optimization problem to an unconstrained optimization problem, especially for equality constrained optimization problem. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, I mean we, we haven't come to that yet. I mean, you can define the Lagrangian even for lambda, just for any lambda, but I mean, when you, yeah, we'll come to that part. But for now, just assume that lambda, lambda is uh, m dimensional and new, basically as many as the number of inequality constraints and nu is the number of uh, equality constraints, like e, the dimension of nu is the number of equality constraints. All right. So, with this, we define something called Lagrange dual function or Lagrangian dual function. So, this is a function in terms of your Lagrange multipliers lambda and nu and it is defined to be So, as I said, so this is nothing but minimize the Lagrangian with respect to x, just with respect to x. So, for each lambda and you fix a lambda and mu and you minimize the Lagrangian with respect to x and that gives you one particular value of g, uh, that Lagrangian dual, right. So, g lambda, again it is a function of two variables and you try to uh, get rid of this x variable by minimizing it over x, okay. Is this clear? All right. So, this has a nice lower bound property. So, this says that if, if your lambda is and that basically comes like answers your question. So, if your the, the Lagrange multiplies for the inequality constraints if they turn out to be positive, then your primal objective value always over approximates your Lagrangian dual for any uh, for all lambda nu as long as lambda is a positive, okay. And this gives you an idea as to, okay, I mean we will we'll come to the duality gap and things later, but this, so as long as this is true, P star is always in uh, sort of the upper bound on this Lagrangian dual function. And let us look at a quick proof uh, for this. Yeah. Okay. So let's let us fix some x, right? Some x bar. So f of x bar, we know it's going to be greater than or equal to f of x bar plus summation i one through n lambda i h i of x bar plus j 1 through r nu j l j of x bar. Why is that? We choose an x bar which is a feasible point. So, so why is that? So, if x bar is a feasible point, then Lg of x bar is 0, Hi of x bar is less than equal to 0 and if lambda is a greater than equal to 0, then this whole term is less than equal to 0, right. So, therefore, the left hand side is always going to supersede the right hand side, right. Is this clear? So, what is the right hand side? It is nothing but Lagrangian evaluated at x bar lambda in nu, okay. And this is true for a specific x bar. So, if I choose the minimum value of Lagrangian, it, it, that is also going to be true. 
okay and what is this value the lagrangian dual function right okay so what do we get from here f of x bar is greater than or equal to g lambda nu and this is true for every x bar in your constraint set so if i try to minimize x over all x bar in x f of x bar this should also be true and this value is nothing but p star right so we get that p star is greater than or equal to okay is this clear so p star is always an upper bound on the lagrangian dual function okay so what is the best that you can do by the way this a quick remark so this up this lower bound property uh, this holds true even if the functions f g sorry f h i and l g are non convex right because nowhere we used a convexity argument even if they are non convex your primal objective value optimal value is always going to exceed the lagrangian dual for any lambda nu is this clear is this uh, is this clear to everyone so what does this suggest this suggests that like if even if i try to maximize this maximize this lagrangian dual because this is true for any lambda nu right as long as lambda is greater than or equal to 0 so even if i try and maximize this uh, with respect to lambda nu the best optimal value that i can obtain which is the maximum of this for this particular thing that is again going to be upper bounded by p star so p star is the best estimate of the of the, like the maximum value of this lagrangian dual okay and your lambda and nu are your dual variables right so this is an optimization problem in terms of lambda and nu so this kind of suggests that p star is also going to be if i try to maximize as long as lambda is greater than or equal to 0 maximize lambda or so this thing this is still true right because this is true for any lambda and nu and if i try to look at an equivalent problem which looks something like this which is now defined in terms of lambda and nu right so this brings us back to the first problem that we looked at uh, for the example that we started with which is this particular problem right now how lambda corresponds to inequality constraints or number of inequality constraints right the size of lambda and number of inequality constraints here are just r so if r is much much smaller than n and if i work with the dual problem which is in terms of lambda and nu then uh, i need to work with much smaller size problem right and this makes things much easier and what are the constraints that we have just that lambda is greater than or equal to 0 again much easier constraints to work with than something like ax less than or equal to b so you see the uh, like advantage of working with so in but this time instead of working with the minimization problem it will be a maximization problem so maximize g lambda nu sub, uh, subject to lambda greater than or equal to 0 and that is going to be your uh, uh, dual problem is this clear any questions on uh, dualizing your primal problem so again it's it's done in terms uh, it's done using uh, the lagrangian dual which is g lambda nu and we know that this is uh, the best estimate that you can get even if you try to maximize this function is is p star right if it turns out that p star is equal to this particular thing and we are going to look at conditions and that is called strong duality so in general p star is so let's say this optimal value is d star so in general p star is always greater than or equal to d star and this is called weak duality okay if there are if you can show that uh, p star is going to be equal to d star i can uh, very well work with this equivalent problem right the dual optimization problem and 
by the way this thing is called strong duality and we can guarantee strong duality under certain assumptions and then we are going to look at those assumptions as well but the idea is if strong duality holds then it may make sense to work with the dual optimization problem in certain cases then then work with the primal one okay it's it's i mean in general it's not tight and it's i mean mm -hmm. right right so yeah so one thing that like one of the properties that we should look at for this particular problem so again uh, so when we talk about minimization we think of convex functions right when we talk about maximization then we should consider concave function so can we say something about this g is g concave so what is the definition of g minimize x in r in right so what so what can we say about this g is it convex concave when is it convex when is it concave so first of all g is a function of lambda and nu right it's not a function of x it's a function of lambda and nu and what is i mean how are we constructing g through point wise minimization right for each x we are doing this minimization so so for for each lambda and nu we are doing minimization over x so we are doing point wise minimization right so remember like in one of the lectures we looked we had looked at operations that preserve convexity and that one of them was point wise maximization so let's see how point wise minimization works suppose you have functions uh, like this and so on right and let's look at the point wise minimization of these functions so here uh, maybe i'll try to get rid of this something like this right like so what would be the point wise minimization of this function these set of functions so this function gets minimized at this point here the minimum would be uh, something like this right so so this like looks like a concave function so just as point wise maximization is convex point wise minimization is concave so and what about functions what a, like so g lambda nu it's basically a fine function of lambda nu so pretty much like these functions right a fine functions are linear functions you I mean so point wise maximization of affine functions is always or point wise minimization of affine functions is always going to be concave so this g lambda nu is always concave even if f h and l are non convex why because it's point wise minimization of affine functions in lambda and nu okay so this g lambda nu of, of always turns out to be a concave problem so maximization of g lambda nu it's always a concave optimization problem or concave problem and we know that we can solve i mean it's easier to work with convex I mean, just as it i mean it's easier to work with convex functions minimization of convex functions it's as easy to as i mean as easy as maximizing the concave function right so 
So even if your original problem is non-convex, dual problem is always concave. So that's that's one thing that you should keep in mind. It's always concave in lambda and nu. Is this clear? Yeah, the dual problem, yeah, which 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 is going to be called. But the thing is, like this particular minimization, if you are able to come like uh, get rid of x and be able to present it in a cl closed analytical form, then you have a, an expression for g lambda nu, right? Otherwise, the expression for g lambda nu need not be known. So then it becomes, I mean, then it becomes difficult, right? So as long as you are able to get a closed form expression of this, uh, and for simpler uh, objective functions, simpler functions f, h, i, and l, j, you would be able to. Then it's much easier to work with uh, dual problems. It's it's a, it's always a concave problem. Yeah, I mean, I'm saying that like you want to be able to solve this, and let let's say you're trying to maximize uh, g lambda nu. I mean, you know the functional form of fx, hi, and lj, but in order to maximize this function, you also need to know the functional form of g, right? So at least this particular optimization problem, either you are able to solve this analytically, if even if it's non-convex, -con, non even let's say f and h and l are non-convex, if you are able to solve this analytically, then it's fine. If they are non-convex and you are not able to solve this analytically, then you would have to run an algorithm to solve this first, and then for a given lambda, you get this expression, right? Now there. Because if it's non-convex, you may get some. Uh, I mean, you may get stuck at a local minima, right? So you don't know if you have solved this correctly. Yeah, yeah. So in convexity, even if you are not able to solve it in a close, like in a close form, because it's a convex problem, we know that we are going to get, like, we are going to converge to a, lo a global minima, and therefore, even if you arrive at it numerically, it would still be a correct estimate. Whereas, uh, if it's a non-convex problem, then it becomes challenging, right? All right.